Okay, this next question comes from Shane, and it's regarding our sol solar photovoltaic system. He asks, uh, why would you set up your independent power so source so that it switches off when the mains power goes out? Wouldn't isolators, whether manual or automatic, be a better idea? Otherwise, why bother? Because you'll have to crank up an emergency generator with the same frequency as mains power cuts. Honest question, not taking the piss. <laughs> Uh, it's a great question, and there's a few good re answers for that question. Number one, to build a solar photovoltaic system, it costs between $2.50 to $3 per watt. So I got those panels for free, but if I didn't, um, that system there is about 6 kilowatts, so it would cost you know probably $18,000 to $23,000 kind of to install it. So that's just the, the power generator, so to speak. And so that, when the sun is shining, it produces electricity, and basically the power gets consumed on site if there's a demand for it and if it's not it gets sent back to the grid to um, have the isolation switch that you're talking about uh, we call it switch gear um, the switch gear has to monitor the health of the grid to determine whether or not it should isolate this property as an island or allow the power the surplus power to be brought back to the grid and so this is fundamentally a grid tied system, which means that when the grid is up, it's up. When the grid is down, it's down. And I absolutely agree with you that I would like this property to be able to act as an island when the grid is down. That's the long-term intention. Um, but as long as it is classified as a grid tied system, the, the, one of the rules and regulations in Canada, specifically here in Alberta, is that we have to have a rapid shutdown. So when the grid shuts down, it has to rapidly shut down because if there's ever any linesmen working on the power lines outside of our property, we don't want to be sending power back into the grid and potentially kill that person. So it's, it's a, an intrinsically safe system that makes sure that the people that maintain the grid don't die. The step up in cost to go from what we've got, which is a grid tied system to a grid hybrid system, just the switch gear alone is another $12,000. So what that switch gear does is it monitors the health of the grid. If the grid goes down, it isolates the property. Um, and then this property acts like an island. And so in that scenario, because we have micro inverters on those solar panels, when the sun is shining, we would have power then. But as soon as the sun went down, even though we were an island, there'd be no electricity for me to use. So from there, once we have that switch gear, then we can add batteries in. Now each 13 kilowatt hour battery runs between eight and $12,000. And typically you can put between one and four of those batteries in series, which would mean that you'd have between 30 and 45 kilowatt hours of energy that you can consume. Now, most people don't understand what a kilowatt hour is because it's a super weird unit. But basically, to put that in perspective, the average North American house uses 30 kilowatt hours of power per day. So if you have a battery that can that allows um, that it has up to 30 or 45 kilowatt hours of storage, that's about what a typical North American family would require if the grid was down for one day. Now, you'd also have to have enough power or the ability to recharge those batteries so you'd have to have a suitably large like a large enough solar array to be able to charge that battery up through the day so that you could have surplus power at night um, now to basically put the solar panel the switch gear and three batteries in series we're going to go from let's say a twenty thousand dollar system which is what we have today to a $60,000 system. So it's gonna add about three times the cost to the system to be able to do what you're asking, which is islanding. And my opinion is that the electrical grid is far too small right now to do what we're gonna be asking of it in the next decade. We're basically gonna transition all of the fossil fuels that we use in our cars, trucks, and other uh, fossil fuel-based appliances over to electricity. And the power grid is probably a hundredth of the size of the oil and gas grid. Um, so the only way that we're going to actually be able to scale from an oil and gas infrastructure to an electrical infrastructure is that if every house has its own battery bank, as well as its own switch gear, as well as its own um, solar array. To put this in perspective, uh, our house in Calgary, which is where we've lived for the last 10 years, um, is on a shared transformer with six other homes. Now, if every house in that, sharing that transformer, sorry, if three houses out of the six houses on that transformer got a Tesla car and charged it simultaneously, it would explode the transformer. 
If three out of the six houses got a decent sized solar array on it, it would also potentially explode the transformer. And so there's no way that these power companies are going to replace all the transformers and replace all the lines. It would be a multi-trillion dollar endeavor in North America alone. So the only way that they're gonna be able to do this transition is if each house has its own solar array and if each house has its own battery bank. And so the solar array will preferentially recharge batteries sitting in garages or in houses, which will be used to run the house, but also to charge the electric cars. And when there's a surplus amount of energy, the array will have to check with the grid and specifically the local transformer to determine whether or not the transformer or the grid can actually take any power at that time. Because the problem with solar is that it produces at peak when all the other panels are producing at peak. Now, one possible solution to that is that if every house has batteries, then the solar panels will charge the batteries up and then the batteries will make a decision between the battery and the grid with regards to when it will release surplus energy onto the grid or whether that power will be used to charge their electric cars or whether that power will be used to use the house. It's a, it's a pretty complex problem, but, I, but all the kind of pieces exist to be able to make that transition. And that's really what Elon Musk and, um, and a lot of the electrical LG, Sanyo, they're all kind of gearing up to solve this problem. And that's why there's so many battery factories being built right now, because they all know that every house and every car and every truck and possibly every boat is gonna to need to have both batteries and electrical motors as we transition the world off of fossil fuels in the next 20 to 30 years. So it was a really long answer, uh, but I had to give you a bit of background with regards to why we made the decisions that we did. Thanks so much, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.